Hello and welcome back. In the short lecture, we will be learning about Azure AD Identity Protection. In short, we also called AADIP. Azure Identity Protection is administrator's a toolbox to prevent and detect and for the remediation purpose, uh, it will be used for the risky users within your organization. It will closely monitor every logon activity uh, for their identity compri uh, compromises using numerous detections. So when we talk about those detections, it will be used all these detections uh, starting from heuristics or machine learning or they can come from a partner products also for the uh, detection uh, mechanisms and when you see a, a user uh, sign in as a risk it will be uh, considered uh, two types basically one would be the user sign in risk and other one would be the sign in risk so it is actually differentiating here one with the user risk other one is the sign in risk so when we talk about the user risk probably an identity is completely compromised when we talk about uh, sign in risk it could be probably a sign in is compromised so when we look at here the sign in risk uh, we can classify in a two different ways one would be the real time so that means when a user try to log in that's called real time so real time based on only uh, detections the other one would be the aggregated so if i take in you know, a simple example here real time sign in for example a user all the time used to you know, log in from a location called us california now he's trying to log in from Australia altogether so now we wanted to challenge the user to prove his identity so that's where the sign-in risk comes so that's called real-time uh, real-time so whereas the aggregated is it will actually checks the last a few of the sign-in um, of sign in activities and the locations based on that it will come up with this code uh, with the aggregated based and then uh, it will allow for the users for the sign in purpose so these are the risks are shown as a high and medium or low or in your identity protection manager uh, console or you know in the azure portal so customers can use these risks to uh, set and you can apply automated remediated uh, remediation policies for example let's say user policy or a sign in policy uh, we can apply for example user is trying to sign in or maybe uh, user policy is a separate we can apply or the sign in policy can be applied these responses um, for your entire organizations in a multiple of ways so if we look at uh, those uh, benefits of the risk policies are the first one would be the balance security and productivity for example all sign-ins are not challenged within your uh, multi-factor uh, authentication because some of the uh, some of the securities we wanted to ensure that the security is balanced along with the productivity uh, the reason being uh, if we keep on challenging the users for the multi-factor authentication to prove them that itself gets compromised we need to only uh, challenge if it is a risk is associated with that sign-in option for or for that user so the number two would be the reduced time to respond after a compromise so the number three is the reduced to uh, getting the calls from the help desk uh, so that you are you know controlling your cost management also with the automated policies that you can uh, configure instead of help desk to uh, manually do uh, or prevent or uh, perform some kind of you know, actions instead of that you can configure your policies to automatically remediate those risks let's say if a user is trying to coming from as we said earlier if a user regularly coming from uh, United States California location if user try to log in as all of a sudden in the next day from Australia it will be prompted uh, as the MFA definitely and the next minute uh, the user comes from maybe China uh, and the next minute maybe he's coming from different locations so that indicates for us as the high risk so in that situation automatically we can block the access or we can ask the user to reset it the password or maybe a disable for some time so these actions should be automatically done that's called the time to respond as well as the reducing the cost on your help desk and 
and all these actions are fully automated so you no need to do uh, any of these actions so most of the admin job is completely uh, made easy so if you see here the user interface uh, gives the options for you for a simplified risks uh, for the admins um, when I say that uh, you can easily identify uh, by clicking on the risks type and the risks you get that um, automated events which are showing as the risk and you can uh, furthermore you can filter them uh, automatically and then you can apply the action also and all these are integrated directly within your uh, sign-in report so if you remember uh, if you want to know uh, a view of the reports normally you have to go to the sign in option and filter with the user so that's no more uh, needed now the reason being uh, the only risk events will be you know, populated uh, within your user interface for the identity management console so that that's a uh, great flexibility for any of the IT admin to view the required uh, specific events let's think in other way uh, you may have a Windows server uh, this is not relevant to the identity management but think about it uh, you have thousands of events but as a Windows admin if you wanna uh, search for a specific event it takes a lot of time and you have to go through it finally you will be uh, after spending so many hours uh, so much time after spending uh, you would be uh, identifying those events and you will make a filter to view only those who events but in this case similar work will be done automatically with the machine learning and it will be visible for you uh, in a reporting console and also risk insights uh, it will give you the recommendation let's say if the user um, is ID is compromised it, it, it gives you that uh, information why and what happened why this user is treated as a risk all this information will be shown right uh, right in the console and you can directly take action not just the one event you can take on multiple events also with a single right click option so that's the great flexibility as a great uh, user interface what you have with the identity management and now with the immediate protection with the risk feedback you can also give the feedback if if you are treating that as a whitelist or you want to, you want to take some action you can give there then and there a right um, immediately a feedback also you can also perform actions like filtering sorting bulk actions as we talked earlier all these actions can be done uh, right from uh, one console so it's easy now let's check the uh, flow how it actually works uh, this is a flow thing that uh, this is a user trying to use his user ID and password to authenticate with your Azure Active Directory as we talked earlier your Azure AD identity protection will apply or will be integrated with your Azure Directory that means it will apply for all users no matter what is the user account so whatever the user account is trying to sign in so then what would happen is it will be you know, calculated completely real time with the sign in risk and it will give you some score so internally you no need to you know, worry about that scoring and this is fully automated and then you get that real time sign in risk level will be assist and then uh, this is a sign in risk now this is a user risk so what happens is this sign in risk uh, will be you no know, monitor or will be calculated against to the user risk also then it will check for any of the existing user level uh, based any of the risk let's say this user is frequently logging from a different unknown sources or maybe he's a genuine user always try to log in from home as well as from uh, maybe office or sometimes from a coffee shop N not more than three different location in that case it knows that these are the are trusted IPs or trusted locations where user can log in so he will be you know, allowing for the uh, access if not what would happen is um, it would once we get this code actually it goes to the identity protection policies where we configure automated action to be taken on a real time so all these days uh, before as your uh, AD identity protection we used to work maybe post sign-in 
we need to take the action or we might be you know, uh, doing the actions on the post sign in but with the identity protection it's a real time we haven't granted the authentication yet for the required resources what we are trying to do is we are still uh, we are still trying to understand the risk and the sign-in of that risk as well as the user sign-in risk levels so that levels will be handed over to identity protection policies so the policies will be automatically configured and it will be available for us so uh, as a scenario one if there is no user risk there's no um, sign-in level risk and it meets the threshold so when we say threshold the risk will be as we talked earlier you have a low and medium and high so if you configure your policies anything is the medium and above uh, as treated as the risk high then this goes to the scenario two but if a scenario one is the treated as the medium and low below then it will be allowed uh, for the user uh, will uh, assign I mean the sign-in process will be without challenging your MFA it can allow it. whereas if the scenario 2 comes the user risk level meets the identity protection then this will be challenged uh, to change the password or maybe user account will be blocked or maybe it will be challenged with the multi-factor authentication so these things will be available within your identity protection policies so based on that action either the sign-in will be blocked or it will prompt for the changing password or maybe disabled for some time or MFA will be be challenged so this is how the workflow will work now let's talk about other um, uh, other way of uh, structure like in you know, a user risk user sign in and then the disk uh, detection will be uh, considered as the risk level one two three four all that a kind of you know ranking will be given now let's also talk about uh, the product wide alignment so how it happens like the you do have the policies you also have the reports and public api is also available where you can uh, integrate within with the help of, of these sign in uh, apis which are available within the microsoft azure identity protection and also you have the enhanced machine learning mechanism so all these will be you know, calculated uh, at the user risk level sign in risk level and then uh, it will be calculated the value of the risk and to configure this this these are the next two slides or from the direct Microsoft documentation you can refer the documentation so if you are trying to work with identity protection um, then you might need to be you know have at least these are the roles like uh, global admin permission or security admin or security operator or security reader um, so that you can do all the uh, all the respected actions can be done for example security admin and global admin can perform almost everything and what they cannot do except the uh, reset password for a user but the security operators can reset the password for a user as well as they can also configure uh, the challenging uh, policies and they can change the policies they can configure the alerts so that you can get the automated email for the IT admin or the security team all that can be done if you have the permissions with the security operator and the security reader is he can view all the identity protection reports and the overview complete blade and he can configure change policies he can do almost all the things uh, which are available uh, with the security operator and also he can give a uh, feedback on detections and now it's a time for understanding the licensing so I would put it in a simple way if you want uh, entire suite of identity protection then go for as your uh, premium 2 license because on a P1 license you don't get it much all the basic information for example security reports or security uh, reports based on the risky users or sign in or security uh, reports for the risk detection mechanisms all will be very very limited and also the these are uh, two also you're getting actually from Azure AD free basic free options also so you don't need to uh, especially have a P1 so there's no use if you use the P1 instead if you go for the P2 for those users it will be really beneficial benefit it gives the benefit for the risky user so you can uh, go for the Azure uh, premium AD this is one of the question uh, even in the SE500 exam 
I hope this lecture gave you a great overview on Azure AD Identity Protection. In the next lecture, we will be working more with the demo and the configuration and we will work with those risky events, all that uh, within this flow, whatever it was uh, showing here. Thank you for watching this. I'll catch you in the next lecture.